Hi there. This is uh, Eugene Blanchard, and this is a car lift I built uh, probably about seven years ago. So it's, it's based on a scissor uh, car lift. A scissor car lift usually goes like this. And the problem with the scissor is that when this is raised, in the middle you have the uh, scissor part and you can't work under the car. So what I did is I took the scissor part and I spread it this way. So now you have room to work under the car. So let's just see how this works. So, lots of room to work under the car here, so you can get in. And you'd have two of these, one on either side. Fully raised, it goes up to about 27 inches high. Fully lowered, it's about four and a half inches high. Uh, the length of it was five feet, right? Which it could be any length. I just said five feet. I measured a bunch of cars, and this seemed like it would fit in uh, under most vehicles. To uh, protect the frame of the car, I was going to use hockey pucks. Hockey pucks are really nice, they're super hard rubber, really inexpensive to get. And uh, uh, this one is brand new, probably paid like a buck or two for this. Uh, here's one I've used for years, probably 10 years I've used this hockey puck with my hydraulic jack. And after 10 years worth of uh, work, hardly worn at all. Well, it is worn, but still quite usable. I flipped it over upside down and how does it work is I have two Acme thread uh, rods here, right? So one is regular thread and one is reverse. So when I turn the Acme thread rod, what it has is I have a couple bolts and I have my uh, holder here, two bolts, and what it does is as I turn it, this will move this way. As it moves this way, because this is the opposite thread, it will move this way. Our pivot points are over here and here and then we have some pivot points and the action causes it to rise. In the center I have a coupling, I don't think we can see the coupling, but there's a bar in here then there's a couple that couples the two Acme rods together. Uh, I also have rollers, this is a, uh, uh, let's see, it looks like about a two inch by, I think that's eight inch, eight inch channel, I'll double check that. It is Yep, eight inch channel, right? I've cut it out roughly here, and then I have some rollers on here, and they roll back and forth. A uh, very simple design. Uh, some of the problems that I ran into is that these Acme rods are not very hard metal, and uh, when I over here I went made a, a hex head, and the hex head uh, is uh, pretty soft actually. Uh, it would have to be really hardened. To make it. Uh, on this side I was going to put a gear and then a gear from here it would go to a motor that would uh, raise and lower this. Uh, this gives you a good view of the, uh, the side here and the way I have it. I had to put an angle in here on my uh, two, looks like a, a one by a two by three or whatever I can't remember what the dimensions, looks like a two by three or two and a half by something so that when it folds down it would fold down flat and uh, this would fold down inside. And the same thing over here. I've got an angle on it. Uh, it worked quite well. Uh, the problem was is I couldn't find a motor that would be small enough that would work right. I spent probably uh, two years building this. Uh, I was going to build a second one and I got stalled by the motor. I tried... Uh, uh, this is where I was mounting the motor then I had my gears here. Uh, some of the criteria for it, and I'll just flip this over and I'll show you. As you can see right now, I'm just using a drill press to raise and lower it. Uh, whoops, that's raising. Alright, so the criteria for the motor, and I had mounted the motor over here, is it had to be this high so they would fit underneath a, a car, right? So it had to be about this size. Very difficult to find a motor that big. And then I'd have to have some sort of gearing that would go here. 
So the gear had to be small, and this had to be small. So to go from here to here was a big problem on the mechanical side. I tried uh, AC motors. I tried, uh, oh, geez. I thought, hey, I need about a one horsepower motor, a half horsepower. So I got garage door motors, but garage door motors are quite large and round. They're small and uh, thin and round, so it was too big. I tried, uh, one time I tried a winch motor for ATVs. I'll show you a picture of it here. And when I mounted the winch motor, it worked great. It had the reduction gearing on it that it could turn this, but it took 45 minutes for this to come here up to up to this height, right? 45 minutes. I was sitting on it and I was using it, right? And basically it was moving so slow I couldn't tell. So I actually spent about three years looking for a motor that would work with this and I never did find one. That was inexpensive, right? Uh, you start looking at motors like a thousand bucks and stuff like that. It was ridiculous. A gear motor, yeah, okay, I could get one for a thousand bucks, but I don't want to spend a thousand bucks on this thing, right? So uh, this is a prototype. I got wheels on here, so it slide back and forth. Uh, wheels on here, so it would, it would work, and uh, it almost worked good. You know, it, it was almost there. I, originally, I was going to build this out of aluminum to make it nice and light. I had steel was cheaper, uh, so I made it out of steel. And uh, that's where that is. I thought I'd share that with you. Thanks.